All right, good day, everyone. Um, I know you're probably expecting road trade today, but I was editing that one up, and there's a couple of sound issues and things I need to resolve, so I thought I'd go ahead uh, and just so something goes up today, release the next episode of Terry and Victor um, as it stands. This is a new recording session, so a bunch of new house rules come into effect this episode. I'll stick them in the description. All right, welcome back to Terra Invicta. Let's talk mid-game uh, initiative strategy and what we want to accomplish. So, at the moment we're fighting a slow burn attritional war against the aliens. There is the next stage of the transition is the first part of what I would call the go loud phase of the game, or at least the way we're going to do it this time, because the rules have prevented me going to Jupiter early and prevented me doing a whole bunch of cool stuff. So what we're really going to do next, if you think about it from a strategic perspective, is switch from fighting a, uh, we're going to be attritional in our main areas while staying mostly under the MC cap, we're riding right at the limit at the moment, to trying to actively stake out and defend our core economic heartlands forcibly, not allow anyone in, fight them one-on-one, -on -one, including when the death stacks inevitably come as the hate ramps up, but also as part of that, have the freedom to go way over a hate cap, which would mean quickly upgrading all of our infrastructure, increasing the defensive facilities installed at each of them, going from level one mines to level two mines, we can build more research campuses, huge benefit, which is why as much MC as possible for that point where we jump up one, two, 300 MC, really, really useful. What do we need to make that practical? Um, we need a couple of things in terms of the technology department. We need a functional warship that will do the job that isn't just the tin can missile boats we currently have. Uh, and then we need platforms that can actually defend against light raiders. We'll have defense fleets, but ideally you want your, like any bases we have on asteroids or whatever, we'd like them to be able to at least fight off anything that isn't a doom stack. So we need some key technologies. We need weapons, we need armor, you need radiators, you need propulsion, and then everything else that there's some nice to haves. In terms of weapons, uh, we said in this one we wanted to go ammunition. So, and plasma technically ammunition, but it wasn't in the spirit of the rule. So we're going mass effect on this one. We're going coil guns will be our primary, and we're gonna go, we need a laser weapon to serve as point defense primarily. So we'll pick up coil guns, and all the technologies to upgrade them because the basic level coil guns I don't think are particularly good. And then we'll need phased array lasers over here, phases. Because uh, phases, not only uh, are they the ones that will give us access to the point defense module, you'll see a little line here, surface defenses will employ phases. So by get, just by getting the phaser tech, which requires going molecular assemblers, ultra capacitors, phased array lasers, all of our surface defenses, all those layered defense arrays that we have on Mercury, on Ceres, on Mars, um, even on Luna, if we upgrade that base and keep it, although I might get rid of it, kind of want the fissiles though, uh, they'll become much, 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 much more deadly. And if we research phase of batteries, green phase of batteries, all of our station defenses will then have those and they'll use coil guns as their other ones. So if we have coil guns and phases, that's weapons taken care of. Then we need armor, specifically because we need to save a lot of weight. Uh, the armor that you start with, the armor that we have available to us at the moment is if you look at our cl ship classes, very, very heavy. Uh, armor, 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 here. So we've got titanium armor, which is 35, this would be 35 tons per point on the nose, 31 tons for silicon carbide, 44 tons for boron carbide. For our existing armor. Not gonna work. You are not gonna get a sufficiently agile ship because what sort of ship do we want? What we want is a ship for the first phase where we're just defending an orbit is we want a ship that has enough DV to make an intercept, so maybe 25 DV, 25 KPS, maybe. But what we really want is something with a shit ton of acceleration, the full four combat acceleration and high cruise acceleration, because I believe that and after the recent patches, I think that is what determines whether you're able to catch someone. It's not just how much Delta V you have total, it's how quickly you can accelerate, because if they have all the fuel supply in the world, but it would take them 10 years to get away from you, you're gonna catch them anyway. So armor, reduce the weight in order to get the performance characteristics that we want. The other aspect of getting the performance characteristics you want is saving weight and getting propulsion. The radiator we have, the tin droplet, it's not the best in the game, but it is cheap and it's good enough. It's good enough. What we really need is a new power plant combo and we're getting there. Right now we have, so we're using at the moment these things, solid core fission reactors that are 85% efficient and uh, weigh eight tons per gigawatt of output. 
I've gone to terawatt gas core fission reactor 2, which is 3.5 tonnes per gigawatt and 95% efficient. And there's another tier above it, which cuts this again to 1 tonne per gigawatt. It's going to reduce the weight by a factor of 3. So that will be great. And that matches with a new drive that should hopefully give us the thrust we need, even on a larger vessel, because we're going to want to, go, want to, going to, want to move past this tiny little thing to something that can actually carry armor, point defense, utility modules, and actually survive. So that's what we need. We need a whole bunch of technologies to make that happen. Um, in terms of, so we've got molecular assemblies happening. That's working towards our phased ray lasers. That's all happening. We have advanced vision systems. Advanced vision systems, the Firestar drive will pop up eventually, as will Terrorot Gas Core 3, which is what unlocks, hopefully, the Firestar. It's not a guaranteed unlock. I'm crossing my fingers. If not, we'll have to go over to a backup, basically. Uh, so, like I said, fingers crossed on that one. If we can get all that, we're in a really good spot to go loud. So what we would then do is build a bunch of ships, and then right before those ships complete, we would set another set of ships to build. We'd move those to the front of the build queue. Um, and then when those are getting close to completion, we start upgrading a lot of our bases to new sizes so they can have defenses. We'd let both sets of ships complete. We'd have a fleet and we'll jump from 120 something uh, uh, mission control to 200, 300. I haven't done the math yet. We'll, we'll jump very, very quickly and you'll see our resources will spike as well. We'll spend a lot really, really quickly, but we'll also start upgrading our mines and taking over additional bases from other factions because we can break free of this cap. Uh, and then we, sh then it's, then it's game on. We fight defensively until we can develop the technology for a ship that can go offensive. A lot of tech to develop, but we're working on it. We're, we're working on it. In the meantime, one way to get more resources. Uh, it's time to throw humanity first out of the oligarchs and security apparatus China positions. And the way we're doing this, the Eurasian military and the UK are rolling their way over to towards to the Chinese border and then the UK will declare war on China. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is because the UK is currently cohesion 8.2. This is actually too high. Uh, it is lowering the UK's science output. So uh, declaring war too quickly actually lowers your cohesion, but we kind of want that. People in the UK love the government too much. We actually need the government to piss people off a little bit and lower. So we need some anti-war protests in order to make things a bit more normal. Um, so that's the plan. We'll roll the military into Beijing. We can't stop humanity first resisting using their armies, but all of our Chinese armies that we control will move out of the way. That'll install the new government, which will clean, uh, give us all of these spots. And at that point, once that's secure, it's going to be time to move after the main point of servant power, uh, the Republic of Korea, because this is giving them 13 mission control, 100 research, bunch of funding, bunch of boost. There's a lot of really good resources there. So we'll move through North Korea. Uh, we will send in Prigeni to take control of the executive because I don't want to get nuked. And at that point, what we can do is we can roll the Chinese and Eurasian militaries through the Korean peninsula, unify them, and then Bob's your bloody uncle. That's the plan. I'll introduce some more stuff later on, but let's get to it. Okay, we've got Terawatt Gas Core 3. So, there is a 64% chance we unlock the Firestar Drive at some point. I have no way of knowing whether I rolled that chance or not, but it's better than even. So we'll give it a couple of months. If it doesn't unlock by like mid-2033, late-2033, then we'll have to pursue an alternate drive, but that's the engine that I want if I'm sticking to fission, this is, I think, the best candidate for a cheap, affordable orbital defense engine. But here you go, gas core fission, 96% efficiency, maximum output, 1.7 terawatts, one ton per gigawatt. The idea with my ships is I want them cheap, I want them light, and I want them fast. Um, I'll finish heavy fission reactor farm at this point. Two, three, four, two, three, four, good. Uh, there was a brief incident where the globals were higher than this, which I caught after a couple of months. But what we might have to do is run this lower for a bit um, just to try and equalize things. What I really, ideally, if this was normal, I would be running probably twice as many points on the top line as I would on the bottom because that's where my requirements are. Uh, but for the moment, it is what it is. Also, we are rolling, the uh, the forces are rolling towards Beijing. 
And we are, of course, moving the 81st Group Army that we control out of the way. Um, we could also move it just over this way. That might be an alternative. Whatever the case may be. Point is, we just don't want it to be destroyed for no reason. Uh, we just need to get to, to Beijing and occupy it. Easy enough. Alright, so we'll conveniently censor uh, what must have been involved here. Um, China is dealing with a little bit of unrest as a result of having the uh, structure of the security apparatus and oligarchy so rapidly and dramatically changed. So uh, Powell and a few others are going to take a while getting that down, but that's okay. One of the best ways, however, to get the people to recover from a highly divisive incident like that one, of course, um, the, way, the way you fix this is, of course, we're going to go to war immediately. Uh, we're going to go to war, with, firstly, with uh, North Korea, who I have taken control of in order to make sure the, uh, the nuke doesn't get fired off. And then while we're moving, uh, sweeping the Grand Army south through North Korea, uh, we will get politically started on securing the executive control point in South Korea, so they don't fire their nukes off. Um, and then we'll have a nice little extension uh, to our new China as we turn it into the pack. Then the question of further expansion is obvious, considering there is 26 mission control in Japan, I'm sorely tempted and you know, they'd, they'd forgive us after a couple of gifts. This would be hurting the academy, but I can put those 26 control points to such good use, such such good use, possibly really uh, healthy for PAC to integrate the Japanese uh, population. That would do great things for the average, uh, for the population count and whatnot. So, and the GDP per capita, it would, it would bump it up a bit. So that's tempting. The reason I'm jumping through this is because this is the point in game where I think a problem, I haven't played that many games of Terra and Victor myself, but I think the temptation, the problem is if you end up playing, you start the game on Earth and you have to have a good Earth game in the opening. But later on, I think the mistake can be to focus too much on your Earth game and forget that this game is fundamentally won and lost in space. Uh, you use Earth to get to space, and we're consolidating because we, every bit of free mission control and research and whatnot that we can get, and funding, because we're now going negative as our labs and whatnot begin to finish, um, and they'll go way negative once I upgrade my infrastructure more. I have a plan on that, but stick with me. Um, it, it's only viable once we're allowed to go over this MC cap. Basically, there's a way to make money in space in a very initiative fashion, and we are, we are going to do that. We're going to commercialize the shit out of space. But you don't want a tunnel vision on Earth. It's great to hurt the servants. It's great to get more ground-based mission control. Like, South Korea orders. is a net profitable uh, location that will give us a whole bunch of stuff and give us as much MC as, like, a dedicated control station which has upkeep and all sorts of bad stuff. So let's roll in, let's get consolidating, and let's get back in a moment and talk about the way forward. All right, we be rolling, they servants be hating, but you know what, it don't matter. Uh, it is what it is. What I have actually brought us back for is the fact that uh, we're going to have to be a little bit less passive for a moment. So if you're wondering how my attritional campaign is going, the Aliens fleet has expanded considerably. They're up to 192 ships, uh, 27,000 fleet power. But I reckon they would be... I don't know. I don't know how many ships I've destroyed. I've got to think it's at least 30, probably more. So I like to think that the attrition is going okay without causing me undue damage. I'm losing some stuff, I'm rebuilding some stuff, but overall I think it's worth it, but I've been mostly passive. What I'm going to have to do now, though, is take a chance. There is a... Battleship, not a destroyer this time, because remember, um, you'll you'll become confident, you'll destroy some alien ships using your shitty missile boats, and then you'll realize that, wait a minute, the aliens do learn, uh, and they do come up with something better. So, this is not a reconnaissance destroyer, this is a reconnaissance battleship. With four mag batteries, a, a torpedo bay, a point defense particle beam, and a spinal mount mag cannon, like a heavy warship out of Mass Effect. 250 meters long, wet mass, 13,000 tons, 19, so 49 centimeters of alien exotic armor. This thing is made of exotics. Uh, big buffer. So what we're going to do is, even though it's going to piss them off, I think we have to engage it and its escorting gunship. Now, its escorting gunship is heavier than the battleship. 
The reason it is heavier than the battleship, despite only having one vile laser cannon, is because this thing's got 52 forward armor, 1.35 meters of alien exotics, 46 centimeters on the side, 70 centimeters on the rear. This thing is ridiculously armored. So I have the I have asset protection, the asset protection force for Earth, uh, five of my <laughs> covered core missile boats. And my thinking is, with the right tactics, if I allocate... My thinking is if I allocate three to the battleship and two to the gunship and apportion the missiles and also do a boost in, I'll, I'll show you that maneuver, I think I can break through that PD, because it's not actually much PD. They've got huge amounts of offensive firepower, huge amounts of offensive firepower, lots of armor, but only one PD cannon for the entire fleet. So I think we can make this work get us exotics because and yes it'll piss them off there'll be even more retaliation but the alternative is to let a surveillance mission complete and that's that's just not on so asset protection force earth transfer uh we don't want we want victor 79 transfer let's engage they're willing to fight Okay, we want maximum possible starting velocity. Okay, what have we got? We've got the gunship up front, and the battleship is in the back. So what we might actually do is we might split this a different way. What we might do is fire missiles at the gunship first, and the way we're going to do this is we're going to order full speed ahead. This will give us even more velocity. Then... After our first move node, maybe, we're going to dump missiles into the Obsidian Fury. We're going to do a full pass on that. And then we're going to switch the priority target and start directing missiles towards the battleship. That's the basic plan. So what should happen is our ship should hit their maneuver nodes. These low-profile radiators don't have to retract. So we'll hit maneuver. And the idea here is your missile has starts with the starting velocity of your ship. So as you can see, we've increased our starting velocity from 650. Okay, so we've basically doubled our, our velocity. Keep burning. Keep burning. Then what I'll do is I'll open up a volley. And then what you'll see is because we're accelerating, the missiles are gonna be linked pretty closely together. Okay, stop firing missiles for a moment. Then we're going to switch target to the uh, battleship, which is less maneuverable. Mag rounds are coming out. And then hopefully I've done my math right. Okay, gunship is destroyed. Keep dumping missiles. Almost all missiles are launched. We've stopped accelerating and we've switched out to a padlock. But what this should mean is the uh, missiles should arrive mostly at the same time. There we go. So we did just trade three for two, but what are three for two? And that is a heck of a result, because when they're made of huge amounts of exotic armor, you get to take a huge amount of exotics home. And they don't get to do their surveillance mission. So absolutely to sorry, Thresher, Sturgeon, and Burfish. Uh, you did your duty. You were like 2,800-ton crappy missile boats that cost basically nothing. And these things, these were very dangerous warships. So numbers count. Uh, missiles are good if you can re-resupply them. Uh, and 12.4, that's huge. So I think since we're going to be over the hate cap anyway, I'll just celebrate by temporarily taking over this servant asteroid base because I have arrived there with my marine transport and this thing is producing a lot of resources, like a lot of resources to the point where I think the point, the point is now 
I'm a little bit over the I'm gonna be a little bit over the hate cap. <laughs> I'm gonna be a little bit over the hate cap at any given time. Uh, I think it's about 125. I'm just sitting at 128, so I'm never gonna drop below 50. But if I don't piss the aliens off so much that I get a total war or a massive retaliation, I can sort of. This means if I ever gets too overwhelming. I can still take a couple of losses and fall back under the cap if that makes sense. So I'm happy going a little bit over uh, by building ships, uh, by taking over this base, uh, maybe building one or two more research institutions to punch uh, punch up even more. The ideal location for that would be to go somewhere else on Mars in one of my other highly productive locations. Because which is the one that's currently got the... Yeah, it'd be Utopia Planitia, right? So Utopia Planitia can become a colony core, which pushes me to 128, because uh, this location is already producing 43 fissiles a month. More than half of my fissile income comes from this location. It's going to be a candidate for immediate mine upgrade. You don't want to upgrade all your mines, and certainly not before you go live, but I can double that production in terms of fizzles. So that's a definite contender. So let's do both of those. Let's get the fleet back to... Let's get the fleet back to reload and refuel and go from there. Okay, the retaliation is starting. A frigate just tried to engage one of my defended stations. Apparently it was a draw on auto resolve. But let's send our two, uh, our two interceptors to that station just to hang around in case a further battle is joined. There will be more targets on the receiving end, but that can't be helped. The other thing I might want to do, if I'm being cheeky... ...is I need to get it so that all of my locations on series have the capacity to shoot back. So that probably means building a ship, replacing probably the Space Science Research Center, as unfortunate as that is. How much does a shipyard take in terms of power? 40. That's taking 20. Okay. So... 42 versus 64. So what we might want to do is do this. That'll instantly be depowered. Upgrade this. And then what we do is we depower the labs to keep this going, which gets the build time up. And then once these should come back on how many do we need to be deep power? One. Easy. So that will eventually upgrade, and that will allow us to uh, regenerate even if these are destroyed. But if these are destroyed at any point, I like them because of the huge water incomes. Like most of our, a third of our positive income in terms of water is coming from these locations. These will eventually have to be upgraded so they can defend themselves. Now, a point defense array is not a lot of ability to defend oneself. Uh, but, you know, them's probably the breaks. Do we have a unit around Ceres to defend at the moment? Two. Okay. We can probably wait for the other one to upgrade before we pull the trigger on that. But this one with its construction module, we definitely don't need that anymore because we have the... Um, we have the nanofab, so we'll give this a point defense array. And that's no longer for sale. Ignore the, ignore the sign. Also ignore what's happening on Insole. The answer is we're removing the um, we're removing the servants, and we're going to do that by getting the ROK army to invade North Korea while uh, the Poms occupy Seoul, basically. Okay, so with the uh, merger with the Republic of Korea, the, the Korean Peninsula has now been reunified. Korean reunification has indeed been achieved. Um, yeah, we're up to we're still at strife, but we got two councillors working on it rolling basically as often as they can in order to try and bring this down. But it does mean that China is now producing 22 mission control, but we're still a long way to go to catch up to the Eurasian Union at 213, but you know, I'll take it. Next target is probably uh, a quick stop in Mongolia is probably not out of order uh, for to take three mission control off the protectorate there. But uh, an amphibious landing in Japan might be just what the doctor ordered if we want that sweet, sweet additional 26 mission control. In terms of the other places that PAC gives us claims on, uh, Vietnam has 6 mission control, Laos has 3, Cambodia has none, Thailand has 10, 
Myanmar has three. These are all uh, Bangladesh has six, Himalaya zero, Pakistan. We know Pakistan has 15, but for that we'd need greater India in terms of technology. So that would allow us to merge up with them, which could be cool. Uh, but more nation merger tech right now, I'm not so sure. I might have to finish the extra navies and consider a uh, consider a jump across the water here because that 26 is really, really appealing. And I figured I should remember to include these just to, to show what the reality is. It's like, I'm going to show my wins, but I have to show the grinding process that happens at the same time. Uh, tolerating hits rebuilding where you can, defending what you have to, so that you'll fight, like I said, you're fighting this back and forward attritional struggle. But what they're doing really successfully to make themselves feel better at life is really just picking around at your proxies, picking around the edges, whereas what you're focusing on is what you need to move closer to your grand objective. So we'll rebuild that Mars base as we have many before. Some of our Mars bases can defend themselves. Not all of them can. But all we really need for these, these are so, when you look at those numbers, like those are super cheap, super affordable. And something like that may not be enough to dissuade attack all the time. Now, is that Victor 168? Are you a surveillance ship? No, you're a fighter. Uh, you're getting better. Like decent armor, decent acceleration, torpedoes, laser, point defense particle like these are good ships these are well they're better ships uh, I would engage but I'd rather they come to me than I just generate more hate by continuing to engage them but I have ships in the pipeline to keep up with whatever they want to do um, I can build an escort in 44 days per shipyard and I'm building more shipyards so Mars will also have some soon so we'll get there all right so we have an engagement around series uh, we are massively outgunned. It's two on two. Two on two is not a good place to be. But we'll get some speed. We'll dump missiles. One ship each. Keep burning forward to keep those uh, volleys together. All right, that's all missiles away. Let's see how we go. Oh my. Got them both. Got them both, boys. And I did, those were not well done missile volleys by me. I burnt too much. I did, what you want to do is you want to keep the entire, you want to launch at a pace that you're going to have all the missiles arriving at the same time, which is not what I did. But Bullhead and Akula uh, destroyed the Auspicious Tide and the Ocean Guardian. They attacked me first, and I got another 2.8 exotics for my trouble. Oh, shit, there's another one. Uh, rip me. So, I don't have weapons left. And if I'd withheld missiles, I would have failed. So, where where is that? Oh, yeah, there they are. Well, let's just priority target. Uh, let's go... We can't run. He'll catch us. We don't have the, we don't have the DV to run. So, let's go intercept course. Oh, and because we were running, we don't have relative velocity. Oh, that's awful. I should have just accepted the engagement. Because we're going to have to burn up KPS reversing. Because as you can imagine, we are going for the intercept course. When I said we didn't have any weapons, we did have the ships. 
And when you think about it, that's really just a massive hit to kill projectile, right? Uh, so there we are, another 1.7 exotics. Um, uh, rip bull. So Bullhead was obviously destroyed in the previous battle. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, all right, so uh, asset protection series has seen better days. But uh, that was a good number of ships that we just saw off. So once that recovers, we can land them at a shipyard, repair them. I'm not sure if I have anything else under construction at series. I do not. It'll take 90 days, but you know what? It is what it is. 51 exotics. All right, that is the real deal. We are in May 2033, and Firestar Drive has popped as a research option. So I don't know what I'm researching at the moment, but that's what I'm researching. An engineering project that I want. Where is it? Firestar Drive. Here we are. Gas core fission. 13.3 thrust rating. 5.6 exhaust velocity rating, 85% efficiency, but that doesn't matter because open cycle fueling, uh, cooling. It's a hydrogen fueled engine with 147 gigawatt requirement. Select project. Something like that. Uh, we'll stick with that because we're not going to need the drive immediately. And it looks like we're about to finish antimatter containment too. So let's run a day. Each and every one of us here has at one time looked in the mirror and hated what we saw. But I tell you now, until you come to love the face that stares back at you, you cannot become something greater. Superior Judith Howell, ticketed live stream, The New You. Ah, of course she ticketed her live stream. All right, I'm not sure why she gets the quote on antimatter containment either. This unlocks antimatter. Uh, but until you have antimatter mass production, you have no meaningful way to get a meaningful quantity of it. Now, we could go into antimatter mass production, but we don't want to. What we need to do... I'll remember, I think it's high temperature superconductors, which is our run into coil guns. And then, when ultra capacitors finishes, it's ultra capacitors into phases or whatever is immediately before phases. Shipbuilding techniques, meanwhile, unlocks adamantane armor. So I am happy with that. I think we need to go high temperature superconductors because we're going to need that to unlock our level three coils. Let's begin that research. It'll slow down ultra capacitors. That is okay. Um, Antimatter mass production is useful, but we're really only going to be able to scale it once we can break out of the mission control cap in a really, really big way to generate space money to pay for the space-based uh, antimatter. And you only really need those drives, I think, when you want to decide when you decide you want to start going to the asteroid belt, or you want to start a fight in the Jovian system, or you want to go exploring and moving out into the solar system more broadly. For defensive duties, the Fire Star is probably going to be the engine. And while all this is happening, we're just keeping everyone happy. A little bit of technology here, some orgs there, and everyone just forgives the uh, everything that we happen to be up to, which at the moment includes throwing Pragani. 70% shot to take the executive on Japan this turn, strip the nation's allies, and then, well, Eurasia and China and whatnot are already rivals of the country. And there are four armies, 1st Guards, 1st Division, 3rd Division, uh, a French division, and also we have a Chinese group army with a navy, all of which are capable of crossing the water into Japan. We would have control of two of their armies, so we would be able to move them out of the way. So we'd only have to worry about one army. Now, admittedly, Japan does have 4.7 tech level. And uh, this is urban terrain, so it will actually be a tough fight. Might be worth throwing advisors onto Eurasia and the UK for that one. But the tech level advantage of the UK armies in particular, they'll be fighting as 5.9s. We can boost them so they're fighting as 6s. Uh, so that should be enough of an advantage to make the occupation go smoothly. Operation Downfall 2.0 in the year 2033. And while we get ready to declare on Japan, let's see if this is another kamikaze attack on my stations. They don't tend to learn until they've lost a couple of ships, especially when you're teching up quickly because they commit to the attacks early. There we are. Like I said, any attrition's good attrition. We are temporarily far over our CP cap, but we can solve that pretty soon. 
Okay, the new test station that I put, I did put up a temporary test station because I think I'm going to need it for more shipyards. That looks like it's coming online. As soon as the defenses Violence are finished, I will feel more comfortable. Let's get the Things unrest stabilizing. finished everywhere here. Very good. We now have a shipyard on that random asteroid, which I have because it's producing. Things are cooling off. A lot of resources. Series that was an outpost outpost that was damaged that we have rebuilt. Looks like another suicide attack. Mission complete. But let us. Who's eligible for federation? Oh, it'll be all the countries that don't want us. Anyway, declare war on Japan. Everyone join in Cleaning the party. Up. And then let's deploy. 79th Group Army. And then the Russians, the French, and the Brits to mainland Japan. Okay, improved shipbuilding techniques. Used to not be a super important tech. Since the changes, I'm not sure when the changes happened, that locked adamantine armor and a bunch of other stuff behind it, now suddenly an important technology. We'll need a lot of this stuff, or want a lot of this stuff. We want the nanowire batteries, uh, we want the adamantine armor, component armor is pretty good, rapid shipbuilding, like some of these are okay, some of these are great. I'm not sure about the new radiators, I've never used them before, but if they're an improvement over the classic tin droplet, then again, that's a way to save more weight, and weight is resources. So it's very easy in this game to build bloated designs that are like 100,000 tons. You can do it. It's just uh, not resource efficient. We want to keep our ships small and deadly. What we care about is where we can put how much payload behind how much protection, how cheaply. Another fight I feel I have to take, five of my ships against four. Why? Because this is a surveillance type destroyer, so it has to die. Okay, here we go on the run up. Missiles away, everyone's targeted against the Gunch, the Corvettes first. We're going to dump a whole bunch of missiles against them because they have superior point defense. Okay, that should be all the missiles we need. And now we switch priority targets to the destroyer and everyone switches fire. I'll just save the weapons just for a moment for them to reorient. Three kills. Missile volleys away on the destroyer. Beautiful. All hail the discount missile interceptor. I can't wait for the new ships, but they did well. Let's see what we get out of that. 2.4 exotics, 4 targets scratched, we lose 1. And I presume we can now recover our ships in case they jump us, because we are out of missiles. But hopefully we can hide at a station with some defences, just in case. Alright, we're just looking at Asset Protection Earth, and I'm about to do a broader strategic check-in for a moment. But first I just want to show off an interesting trick. Um, so, after this engagement, the short-range gunships or missile carriers, rather, of the Asset Protection Force, didn't have enough KPS to get, back to get back to their home station. So what you're able to do is use the share propellant function to empty, basically I'm going to empty the tanks of half the fleet, so that the other half has the KPS to get back to a station. Then they can refuel, come back, split the tanks again, uh, and rescue their comrades. So Noble 103 now has 7.8 KPS, which is more than enough to get back to uh, Leo 5, refuel, and then they'll come rescue their, their friends. So that's, if you ever have ships stranded, you can do this little ferry brigade thing. Um, broader strategic picture. Here's where we're at. First of all, our campaign of attrition is working. The aliens have 176 ships and 25,000 combat power. That is fewer ships and only slightly more combat power than they had before. Um, they are, it looks like, about to dispatch a... Uh, Doomstack to Earth orbit. So they're clearly ramping up their activities. At this stage, I have two options. I can let them burn me down below the hate cap, uh, which I don't want to do because it would be a significant loss of resources, but it's always a fallback uh, if it turns out that way. If we look at just the aliens around Earth, this will be easier. Uh, so we have... Looks like there's a transport that's about to land, which I don't have an intercept on yet. There's a couple of damaged ships that tried to attack stations and were disabled in the process and therefore took damage and are just sort of sitting around in orbit. Uh, there's a small fleet that is transferring to LEO. Uh, there's some station retaliators and there is a fleet escorting an assault carrier, 
which I presume wants to land on Earth. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to kill an assault carrier, but I'll think about giving it a shot. What I've started doing, since I'm not going to burn down below the hate cap, is I've started, without going to the point where it would force the aliens to go to total war with me, I've started lifting up my infrastructure, because there's a time delay on that compared to the technology. I'm working on phases and things like that, I'll show you that in a moment. But what I have started doing is making sure that everywhere is going to be, or at least most of the locations I care about, are going to be at least vaguely defensible against light rating. So Ceres, for example, um, is going to have no level 1 habs anymore because I need layered defense arrays. So this one's in the process of upgrading. And I'm also getting one or two mines just on the super heavy water provinces uh, outposts on Ceres because water is going to be the propellant for the entire force. Uh, if you look at what's happening on Mars, you can see a couple have upgraded or are upgrading, others are not, but the ones that are not are not as immediately vital. This is, for example, I've got both of my nobles sites, the most productive ones, they're either upgraded or upgrading. Uh, so, and this is my one of my big metal sites, it's upgraded, it's protected, it's got output. So, most of the things that super matter are going to be able to defend themselves to at least some extent against light forces. Similarly, you can see, and I will probably add some more layered defense arrays to these Earth stations now that we know that a major threat is coming. Uh, a triple LDA rather than a double LDA on Earth stations sounds like exactly what the doctor ordered. And then we need a stopgap warship. So a stopgap warship that is capable of doing a mission that our previous ones can't. Because we don't have the coil guns that make the coil guns useful yet. We've got level one coil guns. Not great. I want level twos or level threes. Uh, but what we were able to do is come up with this. Uh, I'm going to call this the policy class battleships. Uh, we've basically gone to focus groups and we've asked the people what they want. And so the lower taxes is going to be launched first. But let's have a look at the lower taxes. Uh, very much a interim design before we get to something better. We have adamantane armor now. Adamantane armor's main advantage is that we were using stuff that costs that was 198 tons per nose armor point on a battleship hull, and adamantane reduces that to 33 tons. So you can actually have a reasonably weighted battleship uh, with some reasonable armor. Then we got the Firestar Drive, which gets this thing up to a cruise acceleration of 285 milligs and a combat acceleration of 4Gs, which is the maximum, on a cruise delta V of 22. This should be enough to force an engagement with, this is an orbital defense ship that has enough delta V to engage an enemy warship uh, in an orbital context. In terms of weapons, three Viper missile bays are still the primary armament for the first uh, set with three magazines. This gives them the firepower, they cost three mission control, and it gives them the firepower of three of our little shitty escorts, just in the missiles. Uh, we have twice as many missiles, but we also have more ammo for all of them. It works out. Plus, it can catch them. The Coil Mark I cannon at the front uh, basically just added value at this point. And then two-point defense arc lasers, because we don't have the phases yet, which means these things are much, 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 much more survivable. 50 forward armor, two-point defenses, as opposed to zero-point defenses, about the same firepower, much more mobile. In terms of cost, it actually scales pretty well. Um, this thing is, let's say, three times more to four times more combat effective minimum. Um, it costs 10 times the nobles, less than, four, like, three times the base metals, three times the volatiles and water. Like, it's scale, the cost is, is great in terms of scaling to firepower, but I think this is much better than having three escorts. I think this is much, but better. The, the 50 adamantane plus the two-point defenses cannot be underestimated. So we're going to build some of these for uh, sniping orbital defense work. I'm not sure they'd be able to handle the doom stack. Depends how many escorts I can uh, crunch out in time and how well, if I can fight them on a station is too. That would also make a huge difference. But this is an interim design until we can move over to more advanced uh, coil guns. Because at the moment I am still Mark I coil guns. Um, I could build a design that uses the Mark I, but the muzzle velocities of uh, five and six KPS, I'm not, I'm not really feeling it. I mean, it's way better than the, the old cannons that were shooting at 1.4, but still not really what I was after. So that's all happening. Let's start obsoleting some of these weapons, by the way, so we don't have to look at them all the time. 
no reason that we would ever use most of this anymore. Similarly with radiators, it's like tin droplets or bust. Uh, there is a reason to use salt. I'm using salt water for less weight over the quantum. I don't really need the storage, but lithium ion is obsolete. I've obsoleted a bunch of reactors. We're using the TerraRock Gas Core 3 and drives I've obsoleted everything that isn't the liquid rocket, the advanced pulsar, just so it's there for our old designs and the basically everything's going to be using fire stars at this point. Uh, nose weapons, we can obsolete the old cannons unless someone sets a rule that says I have to actually kill someone with it. Um, and that should be that. So there we are. I'm going to construct those in order to enable this sort of enable this sort of war of resistance. I might upgrade more habs with more defenses, but we're getting close to the point where we're going loud, but we're not quite going loud, if that makes sense. As in, and by going loud, I mean we shoot at everything. We send hate to infinity. The aliens doom stack us, and uh, we go to total war mode where all of these go red, and that just means the aliens will not if they won't stop. Even if they cut you, your MC usage down below the hate cap, they will not stop. They will continue until your MC utilization is zero. It's where they basically say, you know what? Screw you, mate. Um, go back to Earth. So we don't want to prompt that just yet, but I think that requires you to hit like 300 hate. We, had, we can't be anywhere near 300 hate. I'm being very careful to avoid that. Um, so that's where we are. And then we'll consolidate when we do want to like I said, go loud, we'll expand all of our infrastructure, put all that in the pipeline first, um, a bunch of ships in construction, and go from there. And yep, the game is confirming to me that yes, there is an alien assault ship on the way with an assault carrier, arrival date 10 January 2034. It is October. I don't actually think the first lower taxes will be ready by then. So it'll be uh, it'll be the basics. It'll be the covered calls. But even then, I don't think we'll get the missile density to get through the the defenses of those ships. So we might have to let the first assault carrier land, which does, when you think about it, destroy the assault carrier in a way. But it means we'll have to be absolutely on a game with our ground armies. Normally, I would I would have wanted to interdict the assault carrier in orbit, but it's bringing a big supporting fleet. Might be best to let it land and then try and pick the fleet apart. Once the lower taxes and the other policies launch, we will see. Level 2 coil guns, phases, all of those extra weapons technologies that we're working on right now, they cannot come soon enough so I can start building actual next generation combat ships. Okay, so I'm probably cutting this in later. So trim, 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 trim. Okay, well, fortified stations apparently work a treat. Um, I read this as they just can't get through our point defense at armor. Uh, and as a result, looks like we have damaged just about the entire fleet. Thank you very much, uh, Leo5, with your... Oh, you're, an only, you're only a double-layered defense array station. I thought you were a triple-layered defense array station. Now, the problem is, of course, that we have shipyards uh, constructing stuff, and that might be a problem. But let's have a look at the damage to the alien fleet, because otherwise these battleships that are currently under construction uh, are going to be in a difficult position as soon as the aliens, as soon as they emerge, unless the aliens go somewhere else. Let's have a look at Victor 86. So it says all these ships are damaged. I'm not seeing the signs of the damage. Yeah, I'm, I'm not seeing these as damaged. I'm seeing them as just mildly frustrated. Now, one thing that will have happened, yeah, is if any of them had torpedoes, um, how do I, I've got to figure out how to filter the, the ship click menu for ships that are within a fleet. But I'm guessing that a lot of these that had torpedoes will have dumped them, which is a good thing. But what I really need is for this fleet, uh, what I really would have liked is for some ships in this fleet to have critically low DV, so they felt they had to go home and refuel. But for the moment, these guys look like they have plenty of fuel left. And the gunships and things like that, these ones with the lots and lots and lots and lots of armor, lots of propellant and just one laser cannon, uh, they're not going to have ammunition problems. So if anything, what we're going to have to do is hope that this fleet moves somewhere else, or get enough of a death ball together that when our battleships emerge, we can actually engage this with some reasonable chance of success. At the moment, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight vessels around Earth. 
more on the way. And these have all been upgraded to the Block 4 standard. So the Block 4 standard is the old missile boat. We can't change the drive. All that has happened is we've switched out the armor to adamantane, and as a result, they can actually now have 40 points of forward armor, which is a considerable improvement while still having a lot of KPS and whatnot available to them. So they remain really cheap, but now they actually have enough armor to survive a couple of hits from the forward arc, which makes them still disposable, but much less disposable, if that makes sense. All right, looks like they're going to try again. I don't think they'll have any more success than they did last time. But I also don't think we have the firepower to destroy them. So, by all means, continue to attempt this, uh, aliens. Um, meanwhile, at least the assault carrier is dead, because we're about to deal with it on the ground. I also grabbed rapid response teams quickly. This will give a minus three on alien terror missions, just because it's handy, plus it spins off a new organization, which I was just curious in. But for the most part, um, I'm now focused on landing, destroying this assault carrier so we can get back to geopolitical consolidation with the next target on the list being the consolidation of India and Pakistan with its sweet 8.4 boost and 15 mission control. And Humanity First has managed to get the Republic of the Southern Cross, aka Australia, New Zealand, and that's basically it, so Australia, uh, a nuclear weapon. Good on you, mate. Okay, there we go. Alien Army has uh, disembarked. It is at 50% strength as a result of its whole um, being caught basically during the unloading phase. And we have the Europeans, the Poms, French, First Guards Tank Army, <laughs> uh, and I believe 79th Group Army will shortly be arriving, which will bring our strength up to seven armies against their three. They're operating at tech level... Can't click on them. Oh, there they are. Uh, tech level 7.0, which is a lot. But at least the UK divisions are fighting at tech level 6.05. So the difference is only one tech level. Uh, and we'll get the UK advancing towards tech level 6, and, and as a result, roughly 6.5 as soon as possible. For the moment, this is, uh, this is probably more than enough firepower, especially given we have the defensive advantage of being in a rugged region which means we get to recover a war dog as the armies start to fall. Don't think I need that. Iran has proposed an alliance. Who owns Iran? Resistance owns Iran. I don't know what you're going to do. You're going to use it to go declare war on people. I don't like that. Uh, I'm fighting the aliens and then I'm invading Pakistan. I mean unifying, re unifying Pakistan and India, okay? Leave me alone. All right, I wind it up there, splicing the rest of the recording session into another episode. I hope you're enjoying Terra and Victor. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the, the playthrough. Thank you very much for your ongoing support of the channel, and I'll see you again soon. And Rogue Trader people, I'm working on it.